Self-curing concrete with polyethylene glycol. Abstract today concrete is the most widely used construction material due to its high strength and durability. This concrete needs a congenial atmosphere for the development of strength, which is provided by curing for a minimum of 14 days as prescribed by IS code. Any negligence in curing hampers the strength development directly. Today, the major concern for the entire world is the availability of water for future needs and coming generations. Today in the construction industry the most improperly used material is water. The water demand is increasing day by day and the sources are depleting. To counter this water demand we have made a study on self-curing concrete which can drastically save the water used on the construction site. This study involves the use of shrinkage reducing admixture polyethylene glycol, PEG, which helps in self-curing of the concrete. Keywords curing, self-curing, admixture, polyethylene glycol, strength of concrete, internal curing, self-desiccation. Introduction Curing is the process used for promoting the hydration of the cement and consists of control of temperature and moisture movement from and into the concrete. Curing allows continuous hydration of cement and consequently continuous gain in the strength, once curing stops strength gain of the concrete also stops. Proper moisture conditions are critical because the hydration of the cement virtually ceases when the relative humidity within the capillaries drops below 80%. Proper curing of concrete structures is important to meet performance and durability requirements. In conventional curing, this is achieved by external curing, where water is applied after mixing, placing and finishing. When concrete is exposed to the environment evaporation of water takes place and loss of moisture will reduce the initial water-cement ratio which will result in the incomplete hydration of the cement and hence lowering the quality and strength of the concrete. Evaporation in the initial stage leads to plastic shrinkage cracking and at the final stage of setting it leads to drying shrinkage cracking. Also curing decreases the temperature of concrete which is necessary. At elevated temperature ordinary concrete loses its strength due to the formation of the cracks between two thermally incompatible ingredients, cement paste, and aggregates. Hence for proper development of strength and to avoid the development of major cracks at the initial stage, curing is the utmost important part after placing and finishing. In the practical scenario, today curing is done by sprinkling water externally on the concrete, external curing. However, Proper curing is not achieved by this due to the non-availability of water and various other practical difficulties. In ordinary cases, every 1 cum of concrete requires 3 cum of water, out of which most of it is required for curing. Now this water used for external curing is left off causing runoff and evaporation and practically the entire water is wasted. As we know water is a valuable resource and is depleting at a very high rate. As we saw that a very high amount of water is utilized on the construction sites, out of which most is wasted, there is an urgent need to minimize this wastage and start saving water. This can be achieved by self-curing concrete or internal curing. Literature Review Curing is the process of maintaining the temperature and humidity of concrete at the desired level, to achieve a constant rate of hydration helping concrete to gain strength. Curing can be done by various methods as listed below. 1. Water Curing A Ponding. B. Sprinkling. C. Wet covering. 2. Membrane curing. 3. Steam curing A. At normal pressure. B. At high pressure. 4. Self slash internal curing A. Super absorbent polymer, SAP. B. Lightweight aggregates, LWA. C. Shrinkage reducing admixture. The study in this paper deals with the method of self curing by shrinkage reducing admixture called polyethylene glycol, PEG, in different dosage and finding the optimum dose of PEG required. Self-curing The American Code ACI 308 defines self-curing as the process by which the hydration of cement occurs because of the availability of additional internal water that is not a part of mixing water. Conventionally curing is the creation of water not causing loss of water from the surface i.e. it takes place from outside to inside. In internal curing, it is a contrast. The curing is from inside to outside, utilizing the water retaining materials inside, called water reservoirs. This term internal curing is also referred to as self-curing. Need of self-curing The main purposes of developing self-curing are as described below. 1. The rapid depletion of water. Though water is regarded as the main enemy of concrete, it is only for hardened concrete. The fresh concrete requires optimum water content or proper mixing and to obtain and develop strength. In the initial stages, while curing a lot of water is wasted, and various countries and state are facing water crises. Therefore, 
various measures are expected by the concrete industry to reduce the waste of water caused due to curing. 2. Disadvantages or inefficiency of conventional curing. A. It is inefficient for vertical members like pairs, columns etc. B. It is useless in water-scarce places where curing is neglected due to unavailability. C. Improper curing due to labor causes crack development in the structure. D. In various cases, labor cannot manually cure the structure and the structure remains uncured causing no development of strength. Therefore self-curing is an important advanced and upcoming topic in the field and also forms the necessity of the hour. Methods of self-curing. Currently, there are two major methods of internal curing. One the first method uses saturated porous lightweight aggregates to supply an internal source of water which can replace the water consumed by chemical shrinkage during cement hydration. Lightweight aggregate batched at a high degree of absorbed water may be substituted for normal weight aggregates to provide internal curing in concrete containing a high volume of cementitious materials. High cementitious concretes are vulnerable to self-desiccation and early age cracking, and benefit significantly from the slowly released internal moisture. 2. The second method uses polyethylene glycol, PEG, which reduces the evaporation of water from the surface of concrete and also helps in water retention. The polymers added in the mix mainly forms hydrogen bonds with water molecules and reduce the chemical potential of the molecules which in turn reduces the vapor pressure thus reducing the rate of evaporation from the surface. 3. The third method uses superabsorbent polymer, SAP, which absorbs water and converts it into a gel, then releases it slowly with time. This property was very useful when it comes to watering over time as well as for concrete when we need a continuous water supply for curing. But the problem is an excess amount of sap will leave the concrete with a large number of voids which in turn reduces the concrete strength and durability. A small amount of sap on the other hand will have a negligible effect on the concrete performance. The amount of water added to the fresh concrete is one of the most important key factors that affect the concrete properties, including durability and strength. The water is an essential ingredient. Needed for the hydration process in the fresh concrete and the curing process in the hardened concrete at its early stages. Principle of self-curing. Proper curing of concrete structures is important to meet performance and durability requirements. In conventional curing, this is achieved by external curing applied after mixing, placing and finishing. Self-curing or internal curing is a technique in which additional moisture is provided in concrete which is not a part of mixing, for more effective hydration of cement and to reduce self-desiccation. Mechanism of self-curing. Continuous evaporation of moisture takes place from an exposed surface due to the difference in chemical potentials, free energy, between the vapor and liquid phases. The polymers added in the mix mainly form hydrogen bonds with water molecules and reduce the chemical potential of the molecules which in turn reduces the vapor pressure, thus reducing the rate of evaporation from the surface. Experimental procedure of self-curing concrete. For defining the basic characteristics of self-curing concrete, an experimental investigation was conducted to study the compressive strength and optimum dosage of polyethylene glycol 400, PEG 400. The materials, mixture proportions, measurements, and test method used in this study are described in the C. Merits of self-curing concrete. 1. Reduced coefficient of thermal expansion. Studies showed that superabsorbent polymers, SAP, practically eliminate the increase in coefficient of thermal expansion throughout the initial days of hardening. They related the reduction of CTE to the high internal relative humidity of the investigated sample. 2. Improved interfacial transition zone. The interfacial transition zone, its, between mineral aggregates is largely recognized as the weaker region within a concrete matrix. At the inception of hydration, the region nearest to the aggregate has average, fewer cement strains and is normally .LLED with water and pores. They also pointed out that concrete usually experiences stress concentration at the interfacial transition zone owing to different elastic ratios between aggregate and bulk cement paste resulting in micro cracks and macro cracks in concrete on load application. 3. Reduced autogenous shrinkage and cracking. Experimentally it is found that the addition of water saturated LWA with a ground granulated blast furnace lag was valid for reduced autogenous shrinkage and cracking. 4. Increased strength and durability. Compressive strength of concrete is usually related to the curing age at a spicy dot at temperature and relative humidity. One of the key factors that promote high compressive strength in HPC is the compact nature of raw materials, which are attainable by low with C ratio and the equally dot LLED small grains.